going on guys Nito 17 here and today we're going to be talking about gyms gyms and more gyms now as you can see I kind of changed my setup a little bit I am in my man cave room my dogs are chilling behind me so they're just hanging out but um yeah I moved all my stuff in here just because I have more room that way um, rather than you guys just at least you can see kind of my room rather than just looking at some blank ass wall with some random picture in the back so anyways so what we're gonna be talking about today is gyms and Pokemon let's go now you're kind of, you know, I'm sure you've already read the headline here, this article that I have pulled out, and then you're thinking, why do I have this pulled out? So there's going to be two parts to this video. The first part basically going to be kind of comparing the no gems and gems scenario with Pokemon Sun and Moon, and kind of compare it to the situation we have now with gems and Let's Go, and a uh, just a similar type of conversation that may have happened. So from Generation 6, we had, in Generation 6, we had Pokemon gems. In Generation 7 and 8, we did not. In Generation 7 and 8, we had Trials, right? Because um, it fit the style, it fit the culture of Hawaii. Um, gyms really didn't make sense in Alolo just because it's a tropical island. Like, why not do something cool and innovative to match that culture? I completely understood it when they did it, and I was actually really excited for a change of pace. And it's so funny because gyms have literally been the core mechanic of every single Pokemon game. From the first one all the way through sixth generation. Pokemon gyms have always been there. And it's so interesting to me because when gyms were removed and we didn't have gyms and sun and moon, you would have thought the world fucking exploded or that the world would have exploded because it's like, why aren't there no gyms? People love gyms. And at least from this article, the reaction was very indifferent. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because right now we're having kind of the similar explosion where people are like, oh man, um, they took out the battle mechanic. You can't battle wild Pokemon anymore. What is going on? Ah! And it's like, but you're still getting experience. Because that was kind of the big complaint, right? People were like, well, how are you going to experience? How are you going to grind? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, you're going to get experience by catching Pokemon. Very simple to understand. Um, I mean, there, there were some slight confusions, I guess. I mean, I can kind of see some people's skepticism about it. But overall not so much so basically what I wanted to just recap with this is Nintendo confirms that there are no gems or HMs in Pokemon Sun and Moon so this is when the game was being announced almost prior to basically October 19 2016 which was um, a little over a month or a little less than a month excuse me before the games were actually announced so they said here after speaking with a Nintendo representative at a recent press conference Gamasia can now confirm that HMs and, G and gems Two longtime staples of the series are both absent in Pokemon Sun and Moon. As expected, gems have been replaced. Island Challenge Trials in Alola. It's unclear at this time how that will ch uh, bleh, how that will change the usual formula of gym badges, allowing you to train your Pokemon at higher levels, but it will presumably be a similar process. Now, where was this journalism <laughs> when the battle mechanics were switched in Pokemon Let's Go? Because this guy here is using common sense. Well, it'll probably be very similar because you're still the trials, gyms, it's probably going to be a similar process. You can make that assumption based off the fact that they're extremely similar. Well, taking out battling wild Pokemon and worried about the experience aspect of it, well, how else do you think you're going to get experience? Battling gyms and trainers. Yes, I get that. But what benefit will you have from just catching a shit ton of wild Pokemon? Experience. Literally the only thing that's changed is you're not battling a lot of Pokemon. You're still getting experience. You can even argue you're getting more experience now because you're going to get double the experience for catching big Pokemon as opposed to little ones. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Most people, they just run from wild Pokemon anyway. And they use repels and things like that. Now it's like the Pokemon in the overworld and you can go straight to them. But anyways, that's not what the conversation's for. I'm just comparing the two discussions. So now let's hop down in the comment section and go to... Um, just what people's react general reactions were during that time. Oh my god, that's so much better. No more HM slaves. Hey Blaze King, good news, you're coming with me to Alola. Positive reaction. So I can still have one set gene, blah blah blah. This guy's not too happy about it. Aren't there Island Challenge trials in Alola basically gyms though? Yes. Thank you for common sense. Like, <laughs> yes. If Coliseum can do it, so, the so can the main series games. Um, took them long enough. I didn't give a shit about this game until now we're free folks we made it the general reaction to this at least on this forum was positive and it seems just because this is a switch game 
their reactions have been complete, completely flip-flopped, and it's really weird, and I don't really get it. Is it just because it's a Switch game? I don't know. I don't know. It's it's one of those things. So I wanted to show you guys the difference in the reaction between when this was announced to what we're seeing now. Because what we're seeing now is on a whole nother level of weird. It just, it really is. I don't really know. Am I going to miss battling wild Pokemon? Honestly, not really. Because they were random and annoying sometimes. And if I wanted to catch a certain Pokemon, I'd have Thunder Wave, a status move, um, Fall Swipe, things like that. It required you to have a certain Pokemon in your team. Here you can have whoever the hell you want and you're throwing Pokeballs. You're getting experience. It's a more fun, not I shouldn't say more fun, but it is a different way of experiencing kind of what Pokemon is supposed to be. Catching Pokemon, getting back to that aspect. So, I don't know. So, now let's get over to the actual gym portions and my thoughts. So basically, this screenshot here, now I have the actual video pulled up with no music and half speed so Nintendo doesn't watch me right in the neck, right? Um, and give me a copyright strike. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the conversation. Now let's get started. So you walk into the gym, right? And this guy's talking to you and he's saying, let's see, let's speed up a little bit. It's a little slow. So here's the initial statement. Read it word by word, guys. Pewter City Gym only allows trainers who know the tight matchups to enter. Pewter City Gym, number one. So this is specific to this gym, probably because it's the first one. Now why is this even a thing? Gym leaders in Pokemon were always meant to teach trainers what the hell they're doing. In Gen 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., you literally would walk into a gym, they'd give you some kind of snarky statement, hey I'm going to beat you, and then you fight. What are you learning in that experience? What as a trainer, especially a new one going to the first gym, are you learning here? Type matchups. Gyms, especially in Pokemon Origins when Brock fought Red, he basically was telling him, hey, you can come battle me, but you better learn the type advantages first. This is the exact same thing they pulled. They pulled it from Orange or Origins, excuse me. They're trying to make this game, they're kind of trying to pull core elements from the anime and put it in this game to make this feel like a true Pokemon game. Um, not make it feel like the anime, that's not what I'm saying, I'm just trying to say they're trying to make these games feel more like an actual experience as a trainer, Pokemon trainer, in learning things rather than, hi I'm a trainer, give me my starter Pokemon, I'm going to go manhandle every single gym leader and not learn a damn thing, right? Because in the past game that's all we've done. And I think it's made us all a bit impatient and a bit closed off to the fact that this is really how the experience should have been from the beginning. Now I'm going to get into, because uh, I know people are screaming at the, at the screen right now, that it's too handholdy. I'm gonna get into that in a second. There are a few Pokemon types that have an advantage against the gym leader's rock type Pokemon. But for trainers who have never man, this is tech, challenged a gym before, we have them use. Damn, they're going through this tech slow. Either grass or water type Pokemon. So people saw this and they're like, well, this is bullshit. I gotta use a Squirtle Bulls or Oddish, etc., just to battle the gym. That's stupid, that's handholy. This is tutorial like blah 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 blah. No, it's not. You know why? Because they don't force you to use Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Oddish, etc. to battle bro. You cannot use them. Not use them at all. They're only throwing this out there as a requirement to battle him to show that you as a trainer know the understanding of how tight matchups work so you're not wasting Brock's time. That's the element they're trying to twist here. They're trying to make it under, make you understand as a trainer, here's what you need to know when you fight gym leaders. And that's awesome. I don't understand why people can't see that and why they're freaking out so bad. Okay, this is what gym leaders were supposed to be from the beginning. This is what gyms was, were meant to be from the beginning and have been in the anime. And you can even argue that Game Freak has done a poor job of making that experience true in past games because they haven't made gym leaders make you learn a damn thing. Hell, when you beat Claire in um, Gen 2, she literally gets pissed off to where she doesn't want to give you the badge. If anything, all that's teaching people is, oh, I'm a sore loser. So it's it's really cool to me that they're bringing this back. And so, like I said, he's going to finish his statement off here by basically saying, you have to show me a grass or water type Pokemon if you want to face the gym leader. And this is the only screenshot that was going around. People weren't even showing the whole thing. So again, you, can, you have to have one of these type of Pokemon to enter the gym but you do not have to use them. Go up in there with your Pikachu with just quick attack and, and thunder shock. Make it as challenging as you want to. Or if you want, teach him double kick. Go up there, kick the shit out of Brock's Pokemon and get up out. So 
make the experience like always you can make the experience however you want to do whatever you want go up in there with a canopy for all we care but you must have a basic understanding of how types work not a big deal whatsoever to me and if it is to other people and they see it that way i hope this kind of helps you i hope this kind of helps you understand okay and then you show them the pokemon so that's kind of my thoughts on that and basically to finish the conversation what i think what i think gyms will be like i don't think they're going to be too too much different i do think each gym leader may even have its own teaching experience similar to this i think they may say oh as a trainer what did you learn from this and then you answer a series of questions and then or i hope you learn this in battle and they're just kind of telling you hey i'm a gym leader i hope that you learn this in our battle because that's what gyms are supposed to do that's what gyms are supposed to be like so i think every gym is going to be something like that maybe not necessarily like this this may just be Brock's style, but I think every gym will be unique to a certain type of teaching experience. Now, I don't know if every gym is going to have this, like the audience and stuff. I hope so. I hope they're cool. And I also don't think that the gyms are going to change too much. I do think they will. As you can see here, Brock's gyms stay true to the formula. They did add a few things, but other than that, it's basically the same thing. So that's really my thought on gyms, guys. I don't expect them to be too much different, but I do expect them to follow this formula of I'm a gym, I will teach you things. Here's or hey, we battle, what did you learn? So I think it's really cool. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section because I really want to hear. I hope let me know if this helped you maybe give you a different perspective on the whole gym thing. And um yeah, that's basically it. Just let me know what you guys think. Uh 25 likes would be greatly appreciated. And um let's comment, share, subscribe, and grow the Nino squad so I really thank you guys for watching it's a Saturday I'm gonna get, get up out I got some things to do I really hope you guys like this video thanks so much for watching I'm out deuces